Pterodactyl here. Today's video is going to be on this here Toro Time Cutter SS4235. But before we start on the video, I need you grass rats to do one thing, and that's subscribe to this YouTube channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Okay, the problem with this thing, it's got this electric parking brake system on it. So the customer called, said they turned the key, it does nothing, it's totally dead. They replaced the battery, they replaced the solenoid, they did everything they knew, and it's dead. Can you come pick it up? We can't move it. Because when that parking brake system goes bad, even when you release the, the hydraulics on it, because it's got those release levers, you still can't move it because the parking brakes are on. So I asked Elkskins, because he's always hanging around here, I said, can you go pick that thing up for me? And he went out there and he had to get under there and manually release the parking brake from underneath. And then he had to pull the blower shroud off. Oh, there goes the hard work. And take the kill wires off the coils and then he jumped across the solenoid with screwdriver so he could get the thing to start and run so he could get it on the, on the trailer on his trailer and bring it to the shop because he didn't want to have to push this thing so he got under there with some bailing wire and he manually pulled them away so this is that parking brake, electronic parking brake module. This is what it looks like. And everything through this plug runs through this thing. Just about everything. Because we were cycling the key, and you can hear the solenoid on the, on the carburetor. You can hear it. Hear it clicking? That was the only power we were getting. Other than that, dead. So, I pulled the wire connector off. This thing is hard to get to, too. This, this component, this electronic parking brake thing. So I pulled it off. I gotta get a little, a little demonstration tool. I pulled it off, and one of the terminals had rotted off. So now I have to get that, that little tool so I can show you what I mean. So here's the terminals for the switch and it uses an automotive type plug which I would thought you know would prevent this from happening but it did so one of these terminals is supposed to be right here and it's one of the main power terminals and it's rotted off it's gone it's rotted away you can see it's kinda rusty right there so I got a hold of our friends at propartsdirect.net and got me a new electronic parking brake module and now I'm going to show you them side by side see there's a terminal that's missing that rotted off and the part number for that part is 121-3017 now check your model and serial number to make sure that this is going to fit your unit if you're having the same problem but for this model this was the one that we needed now I know what you grass rats are saying I can hear you I always, I always can hear you you should take that thing apart Carol and maybe you can replace that terminal inside there yeah you, know, you can't I took this apart right here I'll take these screws out and show you and when you take this off the only thing that's in there is a bunch of gears and a little like electric motor for like an RC car. You know, you could take you could take acetone or you could take some other kind of solvent, you can dissolve all that. Yeah. Who's going to go through all that to fix this part? Not me. If you want to do that, dissolve all that stuff and try to fix that terminal, that's up to you. But I'm going to show you what's inside here, and you cannot get to that terminal to fix it. Hey, like my hat? I bleed gas and oil. 
I came up with that because one time I was working on a mower and I cut myself and instead of red it was blue so it must have been two cycle oil I was bleeding and it smelled like gas so it was probably 50 to 1. Alright I took the screws out also you can get the hat in our online store we're selling these hats get yours today alright I took the screws out and I'm gonna pull this off and that's what it is bunch of plastic gears and a little 12 volt motor like you would have in like an RC car or something so there's no way to get to those terminals to fix it. This is junk. It's not worth the trouble. Just replace it. But another problem had arisen. It wasn't simply just buy the new part, plug the plug on there, and we're done. No, no, no. Never that simple. Let's go back to the mower. So I plugged the connector back into the new parking brake module, electronic parking brake module, and still nothing when I hit the key, dead. Handles out, all that stuff. So I start wiggling around on it, and it started to work and not work, you know, so I'm wiggling, wiggling, so that's telling me it's a bad connection. So I took this thing apart. I took this plug apart, which is simply just popping these, you know, pulling back on the sides here. I got in there with a little tool and was able to work this cover off. And lo and behold, these terminals are all corroded. So you cannot, from Toro, you cannot buy these individual connectors. You have to buy the whole wiring harness. So what you would have to do to repair this would be to buy this module, which I think is about 160 bucks, and then you'd have to buy the whole wiring harness, and then you would have to install it. So that's a lot of labor. So I'm like, well, this is an automotive type connector I should be able to find these little terminals so I did a lot of searching and I mean a lot of searching and I called somebody I know at an auto parts store a good auto parts store and he said uh, I gave him a part number because I did a giggle search and I was able to find the terminals there they are and then I called my friend at that good auto parts store and I sent him some pictures and he said yeah that's that does look like those terminals but he couldn't get them but I did find them on eBay and you can find them on Amazon and that was the part number I found online that I gave to him and he said yeah he said yeah that looks like those so I was able to get a 25 pack of them for $7.20. So they're GM, he said. GT150 series. But that was the number. And lo and behold, there, there they are. So I got 25 of them now. So now I got to cut off cut off these bad ones and crimp on the new ones because they're all they're all pretty much corroded so I should probably just replace them all which is going to take some time and then put this plug back together so I'll just cut them and crimp them because you got to keep this wiring in order so I'm going to disconnect that battery cable because I don't want any of them touching and I'll get my crimping tool 
Nope, I still got the key on. Get that out of the way. And then I can pull these through one at a time. Cut them off, strip them back, crimp them on. So I got out my crimping tool, which some of you grass rats have seen in other videos, but it's a Mountain MTN C48. And I have to use these jaws on it for this size terminal. They just slip out. Put the new jaws in. Got the old terminal cut off. I stripped it back a little bit. And I've got the new terminal being held in the crimping tool. So now I just got to slide it in there. And give it a crimp, and there's your dinner. Just like factory again. Okay, I got the connector back together, and I got a little dielectric grease I'm going to put on here. And we're going to plug it back in. Goes on this way. And we're going to hit the key. And the motor should start cranking now. Like I said, it wouldn't do this before. It wouldn't do nothing. your dinner. So now all I got to do is put the module back in its place after I pick up my uh, crimping tool. That fell on the floor and all the pieces fell out. So now I need to unplug this connector because the module goes in from the bottom and then the connector goes in from the top and then this cover goes over it. Now this was the hardest part is getting this cover off because there's a screw you take out and then you're supposed to be able to lift this off and get it out of this notch. But it's a little difficult to do. There's not a lot of room in there. That's why I had to take this middle spring out because this middle spring has got a bolt with a nut on it and the head of the bolt kind of is right in the spot of this cover. And then it's got all these plastic screws that hold it in. That's what a lot of these holes are for, so you can get to those screws to unscrew it. So I'm going to disconnect the connector, and then i got to go from underneath and put this thing back on. And then the links, get it, boy, get it. Yeah, he's getting it today. And then those links for the parking brake hook onto here with little hitch pins. So when you turn the key, this thing will cycle and release the levers from the parking brake, which are these little gears. That's your parking brake. There's a little arm that comes in and hooks into these little gears. That's what keeps it from moving. And Elkskins took all this off too. I don't think he needed to do that, but he did what he did to get it here. Put the module in there, and Mr. Cameraman's gonna have to start them screws for me. This is why you need a second person to help you.
It's a two-man job. You can get the wife to help you. And I also took two bolts out of here to kind of give it a little flex for that cover. I can loosen these a little. So I can wiggle, give it a wiggle's worth. So I can line up the ones in the back, which are through these two holes here. I said it. They put it in a kind of a bad spot. But you can't get to one of them screws until you get this cover off. Because this cover covers one of the screws. Then I gotta hook the links up back on the parking brake. There we go. Let's stick that one in there. There's a little cable in the way there. Push that out of the way. So now I can plug the plug back in. with the releases in the front. There's the release to release the pin. Now I gotta get this cover in there. Or if you get frustrated enough, you just leave the stupid cover off. I said this is the tricky part. I'm gonna get something to kind of wedge that up under there. So there's those links that go to that electronic parking brake module with the quick pins in it. So it's pretty simple to just undo those quick pins and pull those links off so you can get to that module. So this is where those links hook to with those quick pins. And that's what it does. So taking this cover off was a lot easier than putting it back on. So now I'm going to take these two bolts out here that are holding this crossbar. Maybe that'll give me a little more room. So I need a, my impact with a long extension and a half inch on there. because these are just self-tapping screws. And hopefully that'll give me a little more room to get that cover on. Who knows, if you own one of these. Yeah, there we go. Now I can get way under there. Let me put my wedge, and wedge it way up. You may say, you know what, I'll just leave that stupid cover off. So now you can see it a little better. So this fits over that, over these wires. But you have to get this tab through this slot right here. So since we didn't show, show y'all how I was taking it off,
And then you gotta pop that in there. There we go. So now it's on. Now that cover's on. So this is the bolt that holds that cover on. This little self-tapping screw. And there's a hole right here to get at that. As you can see, let me get the light. So as you can see, it's not real easy to get at. But, you know, you would know all this if you took it apart. So I need to get me a 3 8 socket so I can put that screw in that hold that cover on. Then I gotta put the engine shroud back on too. Alright, there's your dinner. That cover back on. Now I can pull my shims out. Now I've never done this before. This is the first time I've had to replace one of these. So there's a bolt with a nut. Here's another bolt with a nut. And then this bolt went from underneath for this spring. And I gotta drop this nut down in here. They don't make it easy. They just make it cheesy. Now I gotta get me a half inch wrench, which I don't have at my disposal. Look over here. Here's one. <laughs> Laying by this other job. That's the problem. Working on multiple jobs at the same time. And got tools scattered everywhere. And then you're looking for this tool and that tool, and it's like, oh, maybe it's over on this other job that I was doing earlier. Maybe I shouldn't have tightened that one down until I had this other one in. Knucklehead. I bought a new t-shirt called Knucklehead Working on Power Equipment. There we go. There's our dinner. Gotta have a little. Oh, I can't get my hand in there. Now I gotta go down like this. Here. You gotta be a contortionist to work on these lawnmowers. Seems to be a little more room on this side than that side. Oh. And then put that blower shroud on. Well, got it all back together. So I'm gonna turn the key on one click. And I'm going to pull the arms in and out, and you should hear that electric parking brake cycle. Hear it? That's it cycling. So let's fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Where is he?
you got one of these machines and it won't start, you push that handle in. If it was doing this, because this is what this one was doing, the arms were out. Of course, it's going to cycle because we fixed it, but it, it wouldn't do nothing. This is what it was doing. This was the complaint. And they checked all the fuses. They changed the solenoid, they put a battery in it, they did all kinds of stuff to it and they could not get it to work right. Because that was bad. What did I do with that old one? Because that electronic parking brake, here it is. That electric parking brake module was bad. Like I said, everything runs through this for the starting. So that's what you need to check, and it was because of bad connection. Or maybe you have one of these, and this isn't bad. Maybe you want to pull that connector off and put some dielectric grease in there before it rots that terminal off. Maybe you should run out to your garage or shed, or like most of y'all, probably sitting out in the yard with rain, and dirt, and mud all over it. Pull that plug off, squirt some dielectric grease in there. But that's what it took, replaced all the terminals. Here they are. Some hit the floor. I picked up as many as I could. Replaced all them. Got the part number for that now in case you gotta do that. Otherwise, you gotta buy a whole wiring harness. And I'm sure there's dealerships that aren't gonna do what I did. They're gonna say, yeah, you got bad connections. You need a whole new wiring harness because we can't get these. Or maybe you're a shop owner and you're like, thanks for that tip, Terrell. I'm gonna buy some of them because I got those mowers or I sell them. And then you'll have them because that's that automotive type connector. The only thing Toro forgot to do is put the dielectric grease in there. I think I'll say dielectric grease one more time. You like that word, dielectric grease? Dielectric grease. Mm -hmm. So we got it done. We'll get it back to the customer now. They'll be happy as Larry when they get it back, whoever Larry is. And uh, they'll be happy as Larry. So subscribe to this YouTube channel, like I said in the beginning. Follow me with your dielectric grease on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store. Pick up this hat, because you all, you're grass rats, you bleed gas and oil. Get this beautiful work shirt with your name right here. Tommy, is that your name, Tommy? No, Timmy? Okay, Timmy. All right, get your name on there. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Fixing the toy! With electric parking brake.